once you have created the content of your page and its structure using HTML, it's time to work on the presentation. This is when CSS kicks in. CSS is the language used to style a web page. Now let's open the project files. Just out of curiosity, the reason why the title of the HTML file is index.html is because by default, when you go to a specific URL, the browser looks for the index.html file, if you don't specify otherwise. Now inside the project folder, create the CSS folder. Now in Sublime, create a new document and save it inside the CSS folder as style.css. Here we go. Um, first thing, we need to link the CSS file to our HTML document. So in here, right after the meta information, let's insert a link tag. So to create the, the, the connection between uh, the HTML and CSS files, we use this link tag. And the rel attribute specifies the relationship. So in this case, we are saying this is a link to a style sheet. The href attribute links to the CSS file. So I'm writing here CSS forward slash style.css. Now notice that in this case, we're not using the source attribute to link to a source file like we did with the image element in our previous lesson. Now that the link has been created, let's jump into our CSS file. The process of adding style is pretty straightforward. First thing, you need to specify the element to which you want to apply style. So, let's say I want to apply style to the heading element, the H1. This is called selector. Then you need curly brackets to confine the style applied to this element. Finally, you need to specify a property, for example, font size, colon. Then you need to add the value for that property, for example, 80 pixels. And finally, semicolon. Now save the file and refresh the browser. And you can see the changes. Now, I just used pixels as unit, don't worry about that, we'll talk about units in a separate lesson. If you want to make additional changes to the same element, you can just write another decoration right below the first one, for example, color, green. Save and refresh, and as you can see, also the green color has been applied to the heading element. The only reason why I'm writing each decoration in a separate line and I'm indenting my code, you can see the space here, is just to keep it easy to read. White space in CSS is insignificant. You could write this just like that. Save, refresh, and uh, it would just work the same. Let's stick with the expanded version of the code, though, because it's easy to read. If you want to apply style to another element, just repeat the same process. For example, we have a two paragraph elements. So let's write P, the selector, curly brackets again. And let's apply a margin left of 50 pixels. Refresh the page. Uh, and uh, since we have two paragraph elements, uh, by using the paragraph selector, we are applying the left margin to both elements. At this point, you may be wondering uh, how many properties do we have and how many values can be applied to each property? Well, the list is quite huge and you're not supposed to remember all properties and their values but by the end of this course, you know your way around the most frequently used ones, and you know where to look if you don't remember one. On this note, two great resources are CodeDrops CSS Reference and the W3 CSS Reference. 
Okay, at the beginning of this lesson, we didn't mention the, uh, that CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. At this point, it should be clear why Style Sheets. But what's the meaning of Cascade? Put in a simple way, when you write CSS, the order used to apply rules is important. Just to make you an example, if you write here color red. Now, we are creating some kind of conflict, apparently, and you may be wondering what uh, property value is going to be applied. So just refresh the browser and you can see it's the second one. So the second color value overrides the first one. And uh, actually, the same happens if we remove it from here and we do something like that, h1. This, this is something you can do, it's not something, it's not a mistake. But if you write color red here, save and refresh the page, still the second color is applied, red is applied. So uh, keep in mind that rules applied later override those applied previously. Now things will get more complicated when we discuss about CSS specificity. But this general rule, uh, this gener general rule is important to understand the meaning of cascade. That's the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching.